Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer. Welcome to the second video on triple integrals. In the previous video, we just introduced what a triple integral was in Cartesian. And we did one example where the order was already decided for you. The issue is when you have to decide the order. And so in this video, we will attack that exact question. How do you do it? And so we have <coughs> our job. <clears throat> to decide which variable to integrate first. It's very important that you get a good visual. Having a drawing is critical. And then I believe that you should insert one of the following three objects into the drawing. <clears throat> if you want to do Z first, I feel that you should insert the following drawing in. It's analogous to what we did for double integrals where we put a slice in and we put the circles on the end to help us figure out the upper bound inside and the lower bound inside. So this is a slice parallel to the z-axis and then it gets moved in y and in x. Okay, and what you need to be checking for is it is it possible that the upper bound or the lower bound, those two circle parts, if they end up switching surfaces if that's the case, then it's going to require two double integrals, and maybe that's not going to be the way to go. Maybe perhaps that you could switch to another order, do some other variable first, and maybe it'll work out. Um, once you decide which variable that you want to integrate out first, then what happens is you project onto the plane where that variable is equal to zero. So if you're doing z first, you project onto the z equals zero plane, that's the xy plane. In this case, you just have a rectangular region. But you would want to do, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna see in the next slide, you wouldn't want to do z first. I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, if you do x first, you slice with the um, with a rectangle, small thin rectangle, parallel to the x-axis. And then you move that in y, and you move that in z. It would look like this. And you're checking to see if the back is always the back and the front is always the front. And it doesn't change on you. If that's the case, that's fine. Then you should use that variable first. And then after integrating out that variable, you project onto the plane, the coordinate plane, where that variable is equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, you're back on the yz plane. Finally, if you decide that you want to um, integrate out y first, you slice in a manner that is parallel to the y-axis, and then you move that in x and in z. And you try to probe and see, is it possible that the left is, you know, the left is the left and the right is always going to be the right? Is it possible that they could switch up on you where the left switches from one surface to another? If so, then you don't want to do that variable first. But if it's the case where it doesn't change and you want to do that variable first, then after integrating out that first variable, you project onto the coordinate plane where that variable is equal to zero. In this case, that would be y equals zero is the xz coordinate plane. All right, I'm going to take a blown up version of these guys and discuss which one we should do first. In this particular problem, I'll give you the problem later, which tells you what the, what the plane's names are. But when you do z first, you, you input in a vertical slice that gets moved in X and in Y. See, the lower bound on that is always going to be the XY plane in this particular picture. The upper bound, however, it changes on you. When you're to the rightmost part, the upper bound is the plane that is on the right. But if you move to the leftmost part, the upper bound is the plane that's on the front. These are slanted planes. We're in the first octant and there's the coordinate planes, and then there's these two slanted planes. The name of this shape is a tetrahedron, and we're finding the volume of this tetrahedron. It's a pyramid-looking shape. All right, so the Z upper bound changes. Because of the Z upper bound changes, you wouldn't want to do Z first, because it will require two triple integrals. So let's try X first. Blown up version of what we've already seen. The back is the the x the y z plane. That's the x equals zero plane. The front is this forward 
you know, um, plane, we'll get a name for that plane. As you move and you find it yourself at another place, that doesn't change. The back is always the back. The front is always the front. So it's very viable to do X first. No, no, no matter where you're at in that shape, moving it in Y and moving it in Z, the back is always the Y, Z plane, and the front is always this, this front plane that we'll give a name in a second. How about Y first? Slice parallel to the Y axis. The left is always the left. The right is always the right. The plane that's on the right is a different plane than the other one, but that's okay. It doesn't change on you as you move in X and you move in Z. That doesn't change on you. All right, so here's the actual statement of the problem. The two names of the planes are X plus Z equals 1, Y plus 2Z equals 2. In this picture that I've drawn here, I have those planes drawn in. Wouldn't expect you to have to be able to draw that yourself, but you could. The pink plane, uh, the pink triangle, is part of a plane, and it's to represent the Y plus 2Z equals 2. You see, when, there, when a variable is missing from an equation, that a variable is allowed to be anything you want it to be. And so you could then extend in that direction, in that axis direction, parallel in that axis direction. So this line, uh, y plus 2z equals 2, is the line that's in the yz plane there. And then you extend that in x. And that's how you end up with the pink triangle representing the intersection in the first quadrant for the shape. The other plane, x plus z equals 1, I guess it's this, I guess I think about it as in white. It's a white plane there. It's a clear plane. That's the other part. There's four parts, and then there's the bottom. And so the, the, uh, the purple is the part that's in the coordinate xz plane. Uh, in the back there, you have the yz plane. And so in the front here, we have this plane called x plus z equals 1. y is missing. So there's the line x plus z equals 1 going from 1 to 1 on the z and x axis. And then y is allowed to be anything you want it to be. So that's how we get this drawing. x plus z equals 1 is the white plane or the white triangle, which, which is part of a plane. y plus 2z equals 2 is the pink triangle, which is part of a plane. And so when we go and make this slice in y, if we decide to do y first, the lowest y is y equals 0, and the highest y is y equals 2 minus 2z. Solving for it in the plane y plus 2z equals 2. Okay, well that's great. And it doesn't change. We've, saw, we've seen it on another slide, so we can keep it like that. Integrate out y first, and then you project onto the plane where that variable is equal to 0 at. Um, that the purple triangle um, in the YZ, uh, XZ plane. Uh, these guys hit at 1. And we have uh, our choice about how we, it becomes a double integral at that point over a two-dimensional region. And it's our choice whether we want to do it as what would be like what we had for dy dx or dx dy, but y isn't a part of this, so dz dx is the vertical slice. Um, that gets moved horizontally, and dx dz would be the horizontal slice that gets moved vertically. Either one is good here. Nothing about the region or the inter, uh, integrand is going to tell us which one to do. So we can just pick one. Uh, the low end of z is 0. The high end of z is this line. The line's name is x plus z equals 1. We solve it for z. We get z is 1 minus x. So those are the bounds on z. We have the bounds on y. We have the bounds on z. The only thing we need is the bounds on x. This is dx, uh, dz dx. Uh, the bounds on x, you move this thing from a left point of 0, x equals 0, to a right, way, uh, right point of x equals 1. So there's your bounds. You're finding volume. So there's a 1 on the inside. And your order that you've chosen is dz, dy, sorry, dy, dz, dx. dy, dz, dx. y first. There's nothing in the inside other than a 1, so the antiderivative is a y, upper limit minus lower limit. And so we actually have this double integral here, 2 minus 2z, from 0 to 1 minus x. So that's just going to be 2z minus z squared. You put the 1 minus x in. You have to square that out and worry about the negatives and be careful. Distribute the 2 as well. And uh, you end up combining 2 minus 1 is a 1. Negative 2x plus a 2x. Well, that's nice. They cancel. 
and then minus x squared. 1 minus x squared from 0 to 1. x minus x cubed over 3. 1 minus a third. The answer is 2 thirds. Okay. We're, we're right at 2 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, but I want to go ahead and talk about this next one as well. So this is our third example for a Cartesian where you're given uh, just a generic function on the inside. You're not actually going to do this integral. We're just going to rewrite this, this integral in a different order. And so um, z's go from 0 to 4 minus y. y's go from 0 to 4 minus x squared. And x's go from 0 to 2. So z is the first integral here. They're doing z first. So x equals 0 is the coordinate plane. That's the yz plane y equals 0 is the coordinate plane, that's the xz plane, z equals 0 is our familiar xy plane. And then z equals 4 minus y is the red line extended out, it's, it's the cyan, ver, uh, the part of the plane is cyan, and then the other um, function is uh, y equals 4 minus x squared. After you integrate out z, you project onto the xy plane. Um, y equals 4 minus x squared is a, is a, a parabola that, that hits at 4 and opens downward. It hits the x-axis at 2 and uh, negative 2, but we only care about this first part. And so there we have it. We want to take this from being z first to being, according to this question, x first. So we're going to slice in a direction of the x-axis. And the back is always the yz plane, x equals 0. The front is always the, um, it's like a wall. It's gray. It's like a wall. It's the parabola's equation, but solves for x equals. So if we have y equals 4 minus x squared, then we solve that for x, and we get x equals the square root of 4 minus y. Those are the bounds on x. 0 to root 4 minus y. After integrating out x, we project onto the x y uh, y z plane. We get that triangle. Um, I, I've colored it here in purp, uh, pink. Um, it's still that red line though. That's that's there. Um, these guys intersect at one. I'm sorry, no four minus y is the name of that. So they intersect at four. So it's like y equals mx plus b, but it's z is playing the role of y and y is playing the role of x. So z equals 4 minus y, and then we have our choice to do this as, uh, we don't have a choice, they tell us to do this as z first, so dz dy would be a vertical slice moved horizontally um, from 0 to 4 in y, and from 0 to 4 minus y in z. So there you have it. Alright, so deciding order is contingent upon the drawing, maybe if you can put in the shape and help you figure out the ordering. Thank you for watching, my name is Nakai Rimmer, sorry this video ran long. But um, just trying to help you through this journey of multivariable calculus and figuring out how to do triple integrals in Cartesian. In the next video, we switch coordinate systems and we switch into cylindrical. And then eventually we'll switch to another coordinate system, spherical. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid. Reach out to me. I'll see you in the next video.